the sweet swinging Justin Rose. We're going to take a look at his golf swing today and you may find the piece of the puzzle that you're looking for to try to get rid of that slice finally or you might just get some nice information about Justin's golf swing. So let's get stuck in. As Justin takes the club back you're going to notice that he gets it set up into a really nice position. Really nice position meaning that his leading edge on his club is relatively parallel to his spine angle and you'll see that the club is basically shooting through the hands so we don't see the club head over here and we don't see it over there. So as he takes it up to the top of the backswing you're going to notice how his hands work. How Justin's hands work is a big component as to why he's able to flush the golf ball like he does. Now, I'm not saying this is everything, there's so much that goes into being able to be a good ball striker but this is something that is helping him. So let's just take a look at where his hands are positioned there and then we're going to look at that relative to his feet line. So if I draw a line on the butt end of his club, these hands are in a position where it's basically on the toes, maybe a little bit more towards the heel direction. A lot of people that I see who slice the golf ball, their hands may be a bit further out in this way, and their hands will travel a bit more vertical, so a bit more up, rather than around the body, like Justin does here. This is created by a turning in the chest and a turning in the hip. As he gets it up to the top of the back swing, we're going to see this position here, where it is quite a flat position compared with other golfers. Again, we're going to draw a line on the butt end of the club, and we're going to see it basically on the heels there too. Now this arm structure here allows Justin to get the club into a shallow position on the way down. So as you see on the way down, this position here for Justin, again, this when the left arm is parallel to the ground, if we draw a line on the pitch of the shaft, and it is above the golf ball, you're going to notice that this is a shallow position. Now this is great if you have the ability to rotate and get it back on, let's say, on the plane. Uh, but if you don't have the rotation like these players do, then there is a chance that your club path could get too far out in this direction here and you'd hit pushes and hooks. Or you do have the rotation that you're after and you will get the club into a really nice position. So as we get into the impact zone, you're going to notice this really nice rotated position here with Justin's hips and his chest there. And as he continues the golf swing, we're going to see a nice finished position here where the club exits just under that left shoulder. And we can see the pressure starting to work onto the toes of the club. And we can see the pressure is starting to move onto the toes of the right foot and into the heel of the left foot. Just meaning that he's able to rotate his body or his hips and he hasn't made needed and he hasn't needed to make any compensations in regards to that. So as he gets all the way to the finish position here, we see that typical Justin Rose finish there. Overall, I really like Justin's swing, and there are some things that you can take apart that may help you in your golf swing, but just take note that with Justin's arm structure, it is quite far behind him, or it is quite, let's say, flat. That is going to shift your club path more in to out, and produce more of a draw feeling. So if you are someone who is drawing the ball too much already, don't do this. If you are someone who is slicing the golf ball, then there may be a chance that you could look into trying some different ways of trying to get more of a flat arm structure at the top of your back.